What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to check out a brand new extension for modeling steel structure in your SketchUp models. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Deca Steel is a brand new extension from the guys over at Mindsight Studios for creating steel in your models. It's currently in alpha, and so that means that it's in early testing as a part of the development process. But as of right now, you can download the alpha for free. Okay, and so you can check this out by visiting the sketchupessentials.com slash decasteel. When you get to this page, click on the button for get the alpha. Uh, you need to accept the uh, end user license agreement. Um, you do have the option to download a trial of Profile Builder 4, um, which actually may be worth giving a try because it's got some tools that can kind of like intersect the different shapes. Um, it kind of integrates with um, decasteel a little bit um, in the way that like the trim to solids tool works and things like that. But either way, then you can move forward to the next page. Okay, so this is going to give you access to one year of Deca Steel. Note you don't need to put in any billing information, so it's not going to recur in the next year or anything like that. You do need to make sure that you also download one of these steel libraries on this page. And so you can click on one of these buttons to add one of these steel libraries to your car as well. These get downloaded as Ruby script files, just like extensions, and you just install them in SketchUp. But you can download both of these from this page, and then once you download the two Ruby script files, you just want to install them. So when you download them, you just go into Extension Manager, Install Extension, and in this case, you want to install DecaSteel first, and then you want to install the Steel Profiles file that you download as well. And then once you do that, that's going to give you access to a menu that looks like this. So this menu gives you access to all of the different tools in here. Again, note that this is currently in alpha, meaning that it's in development, but it's got a number of interesting tools that you can use. And so note that there's also a user guide that you can get from the Deca Steel page that's going to walk you through the way that some of the parts and pieces of this tool work. And Dale is actively adding um, different things to the documentation in here. So um, check back as he's currently populating the documentation. Okay, and so I will say that there haven't been a whole bunch of videos on how this one works yet. So um, I'll probably have some kind of a follow up in the future as more information becomes available. But I did think I could walk you through some of the features that are contained in here. So first off, when you click on the first option, it's going to pop up a dialog very similar to the one you get in placement. Um, so this looks very similar. It's got all your tools over here on the left hand side. You can click on them and then you can start adding them into your model. And so generally speaking, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create some grid lines, right? And so these grid lines are going to allow you to basically find the points at which like your uh, columns are going to sit and other things like that. So it's like creating a structural grid on a structural set. And so you can do this by clicking on the build button and then single clicking and moving your mouse in the model, right? So as I move my mouse like this, I can start adding grids in here. And notice how I can move my mouse in order to set the sizing and spacing in here. Um, and you can either click or you can type in a value. So if I typed in a value of 30 feet and hit the enter key, notice how it's gonna create a 30 foot grid right here. So now I've got three grids in here like this. And you can adjust things about these. So for example, I can click in here and I can adjust the label on the grid. So say I wanted this to be A. So you can just select this. You can type in A. And notice how I'm tabbing out of that in order to get to the next box. But then if I click on the uh, check mark right here, it's going to adjust that. So you could set this one to B. And then you could also add your grid lines the other direction. So say that I wanted these to be a little bit closer. So what I can do is I can single click on a point right here. And then I can click again in order to set the end point of my grid line. And then I can type in more values. So say I wanted these to be 10 feet. I can just move my mouse and type in 10 feet a couple times. 
in order to create those grid lines right here. So now I have a grid in my three dimensional space and you can adjust all of these. Like for example, say you didn't want the bubble in here, you could adjust them all and toggle that bubble off, but then you wouldn't have labels in here. So you maybe don't want to do that, um, but you can definitely adjust all of these um, at once as well. So say I wanted to change my font, font's gonna change in here just like this. And so one other thing about this is if you do need to extend your grid lines, you can actually use the extend tool in order to extend them all like this. So say I wanted these to go out another 10 feet right here. I could use this extend tool to do that just by clicking, moving my mouse and typing in a value. Okay, so now let's take a look at the, some of the tools that are in here for creating things like beams and columns. And so note that depending on which library you loaded, you're going to have different options in here, right? So for me, I've got all of these options that are kind of typical AISC shapes for this area, but you can go through and you can pick like the di different uh, W types. You've got a uh, C channels in here. You've got a uh, HSA you've got HSS members um, as well as L and some pipes in here. So you can work with all of these and you can use this in order to set those columns. So you can pick a size. You can also set how tall they are by typing in a value right here and the base elevation. So if you had multiple levels, for example, you could set a second level in here and set the base elevation to be that height. And so we currently don't have the option for a base plate. We can take a look at that in a minute. But for now, if I click on build, Notice how this is going to snap to these points right here. Now, I'm not sure if this is snapping because I have this option toggled on over here for toggle path line snapping. Uh, I guess we could kind of play around with that and see. I mean, it looks like it snaps to the line either way, but I'm just gonna bring this in here and I'm just going to click and set my different columns. And so the way that it drops these columns in here is nice in the sense that it really quickly snaps to those points, allowing you to quickly add those different columns in here. Now, one thing I've not tried, but we probably should, is say we wanted to adjust the size of these. So let's say we wanted these to be maybe like a, instead of a 12, maybe a 14 by something. If we click in here, yeah, notice how it's going to adjust all of those column sizes in here like this. So if we made it a really big one, it's going to adjust like that. If we brought it back down so we can adjust this and click the update button in order to get it to update. So you can use this in order to drop those columns in here, just like this. Now note that there is a tool down below for creating base plates. And so what we can do is we can create a base plate in the model and we'll call this just test base plate right here. Okay. So that component's been created. And so what we want is we wanna set this so that it has the proper size. So let's figure out how big this needs to be. So if I look at this, this is one foot three. So we're gonna say maybe it's uh, one foot eight by one foot eight is probably fine. And so you can also set things like the bolt pattern in here like this. But then once you've added these base plates, so we've created the base plate type in here. Well, if I go back into my column and click on the base plate option right here, you can pick that test base plate and add this. And what it's going to do is it's going to add a base plate at every one of these columns, which is pretty cool. And so we talked about this a little bit, but if you do need to extend any of these columns, you can select them and you can use the extend tool. So I can pick like these four and I could extend, extend these up maybe another 10 feet or whatever I want them to be. Notice how I can use that to extend all of the columns that I have um, selected inside of the model. Okay, so next let's talk a little bit about adding beams in here. So there's a beams option in here. Picking the profiles is very similar to what we've already done. So you can just pick a beam in here based on any of these steel shapes that are in here. So maybe like a 14 by 22 or something like that. Note that the placement point works very similarly to the placement point in Profile Builder, where um, if you pick the top middle, and we can go ahead and just add one of these profiles in here and take a look at it. Notice how it's going to place this based on the top middle of that profile right here. But if you were to select maybe like the center Right, notice how this beam is gonna get placed in here based on the central point. So I think a lot of the time you'll probably use the top middle because you're going to be dropping these in based on this location right here. Now note that I think this is where this snapping comes into play. So yeah, so if you want, 
you can click on toggle path line snapping, and that's actually going to find the point in the middle of this beam right here that aligns with the path lines down below. So if I click in here, I can single click, I can move my mouse, and I can click again in order to place this beam. So this does this really quickly. It's really easy to use. And so one of the things you might note when you use the top middle right here is notice how this actually brings this to the middle of your steel member. If you wanted this to be like held off a little bit or something like that, you could just use the extend tool in order to do that. So not only does the extend tool make things longer, it'll also allow you to shorten things. So notice how I can click on the end right here and then say I wanted to hold this off maybe like two inches or something like that. I can type in a value of two inches and hold that off or I can just align this to the very end using that extend tool. And so note that you can make some adjustments here. Like for example, if you didn't want these beams to be sitting right at the top for whatever reason, you could adjust this and bring the Y offset to like a negative two or something like that. And then when you update this, notice how it offsets it two inches from the point that you set when you were placing this. So um, definitely gives you the ability to quickly move things around in the model just by selecting them and adding a value. And so we're going to skip the bracing for a second um, because what I want to do is I want to talk about the connections because the connections are pretty cool. And so what we want to do is we want to create a connection between this beam and this column right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we've set this to be a beam type. And then in the detail, you've got different kinds of plates in here, right? So in this case, we might say this is going to be a single angle. You can set what the angle profile is in here, and you can also set if it's welded or bolt connected. And so notice how we don't have any bolt components in here yet. So what we need to do, and we could also add the bolt component in a minute. Maybe we'll do that. And so what we can do is we can set how many bolts are going to be in here, and we can go ahead and we can place this. And so when you do this, you want to make sure you select the column first. So the column is going to be the support member. And then if you click again, notice how this is going to be the other member like this. And so you've also got options for other angles in here as well. So you can add like a knife plate if you want to do that. Or you can do like a double angle, which is going to give you the connection on both sides like this. And notice how that's actually cutting the holes in here, which is pretty cool. But what we don't have in this connection right now is we don't have a bolt. And so what we want to do is we want to add some bolts to this. So you can go into the bolts section right here. You can just click on this and you can just set this to be a connection bolt right here. Okay, and so now what we want to do is we want to add this bolt to this hole right here. And I think the one I picked might be a little bit big. So we're going to bring this down. So we're going to bring this down to maybe like a half inch right here. We're going to bring the head size down to maybe an inch. Uh, head height, we're going to do half an inch right here. So we've just adjusted this bolt, but now what I want to do is I want to go back into my connections. And so to select a connection, what you do is you click on this button right here for select, and then you can just mouse over and click on this option right here. Well, then when you do that, you can pick a bolt connection or the connection bolt from the drop down. click on this button right here, and it's going to drop those bolts in here. And so you can see how it's actually adding the nuts on the backside as well for your connection, just like this. So you can use this to really quickly add connections in your models. Now, one thing I'm not sure about is if there's a way to add this to like multiple things at once, or if you just need to do it one at a time. I'm not really sure on that one. You can see how each time that I select one of these, it's pretty easy to make that adjustment. And I need to adjust the nuts on these a little bit, but that's okay. Um, it's really easy to add, but I think that I need to reselect a new connection each time. I don't think, let's see if I can add these to multiples at once. No, it doesn't look like it. So you're going to have to go in here and do each connection one at a time like this. And so I'm not liking the way that those bolts look. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to adjust this. So the nut is too big. So we're going to take this nut and you can actually see a preview of this. I guess I probably should have paid attention to that, but you can adjust the size of the nut. Notice how it adjusts in your model as well. So you can adjust the overall length as well. So to maybe like just one inch right here. 
And so one thing that would be nice, and maybe you can do this, but I don't know how, um, it'd be nice if you could select multiple connections at once in here, but right now it looks like you're limited to one connection. But say that you wanted to adjust this to some more rows of bolts, you could do like a four right here. You can update this and notice how this is gonna add those additional bolts in here, just like this. And so it does seem like you'd probably wanna get in here and get your connections pretty close before you adjust the other ones right now because it could be kind of time consuming to come in here and adjust connections one after the other like this. Um, so that is something that would be kind of cool to see in the future is having the ability to actually make those adjustments to multiple bolts at one time. Okay, so just real quick, let's hop back and look at the bracing function. So the bracing function allows you to actually add bracing um, of really whatever structural type you want in here, either manually or automatically. So say that you wanted to add bracing to these objects right here. We'll notice how um, if you have that path line snapping, this is going to allow you to find that path line really quickly. But you can use this in order to quickly add bracing. So notice how I can pick these points right here and I can actually add braces like this. Now one thing about this is these are currently sometimes going through this shape right here and so you could either use the extend function in order to fix that or if you do have profile builder loaded you could actually use um, the trim to face tool in order to trim this object. So the way that that would work is you would just pick this and then pick this and notice how it trims the kind of solids between the two across that face. So if you do have profile builder, you can use that trim to face tool. But alternatively, if you don't want to do the bracing manually, you can also pick two support columns and a beam and you can click on this option right here and it'll fill vertical bracing for you like this and you can set if you want it to be a single brace if you want it to be x bracing um, you can use all of these different options in here in order to set your bracing then when you're done you can just click on create fill bracing and you can do the same thing over here like this so it's a quick easy way to add that diagonal bracing to your structure like this and then I feel like this video might be getting a little bit long. So um, one other thing that you can do is you can also set levels so you can manage the different levels. Um, so you can click in here and you can set ground floor right here and you can save it and then you can add another level and you can call this level two and you can actually set an elevation in here. So when you set the elevation like this, so this will be level two. No, oh, I didn't click save. Um, so level two, 12 feet, save. Level three, say 24 feet, save right here. And so the cool thing about this is you can click on this little button right here in order to lock a level to an active level. So if I do this set as active level right here, and then I try to add a steel beam, for example. So if I add this beam in here, notice how it's locked that profile to that height. So I can quickly find these path lines in here like this and add steel to that level just like this. So if you are dealing with multiple levels in here, this is a really good way to work with that. And so probably a more practical example would be um, if I set this to be 22 feet instead of 24 feet and locked it as the active level, that's how tall these columns are right here. So what I can do is I can then quickly add a beam to this. Oh, and I need to make sure that I make that change before I do this. But now I can quickly add beams to this structure, just like this. And then the last option on the menu is for shop drawings, which is theoretically supposed to be able to generate pages in layout for all of your structural elements. Um, this one wasn't working for me. Um, I tried to use it and I got a bug splat. Um, this is a very, very early tool. So um, something that's maybe not unexpected for something like that, but in the future, it looks like there might be some shop drawing functionality 
as well. All right, so that's kind of an overview of how you can use Deca Steel. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below, and I'm sure Dale from Mindsight would as well. What do you think about this tool? How would you use it? What's missing? Um, I think this is kind of an information gathering phase for him, so any information you have would be very helpful. I'll link to it on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.